I'm going to have to go for a swim. I don't know what I'm thinking, apart from being desperate not to lose this fish. So this was the very, very first episode of River Monsters. Um, and back then, um, we all thought this was just going to be one program. That would be it. Um, but we are on the trail of something really, really impressive. And I've got something on the end here, which uh, you know, I really, really don't want to escape. Um, and I think it's true to say if this fish had escaped, the whole of River Monsters would never have happened. So there's an, an awful lot at, at stake here. So I jump in the river. A lot of people think this is a, an act of complete craziness. Um, but I had actually, this is something I'd thought about. I'd looked down river, I'd, I'd checked out all the water. It wasn't something that I planned to do, but this was my last ditch strategy. If the fish did take off, my plan was, I couldn't follow it down because there was a cliff. Uh, my plan was jump in the water. I don't know what I'm thinking, apart from being desperate not to lose this fish, regardless of my own safety. Quick comment about the t-shirt there. The t-shirt is probably more holes than, um, than shirt. And a lot of people say to me, have you still got that t-shirt? Um, and what was interesting, we used that shirt partial, partly as a sort of a, a device uh, to show the passage of time. It started off as an intact t-shirt and gradually as the programme went on, it just got more and more ragged to, to show this epic um, hunt that, that I was on. The boss of the production company I work for, at the end of this, he said, uh, he said to me, I hope you've burnt that shirt. And um, I hadn't actually at that point, but I did throw it away. And he then came up to me and said, you know, I, was, I was joking, that, that, that you know, it's, it's, it's a relic equivalent to something like the Turin Shroud. I mean, that, you know, that has real historical significance, but uh, unfortunately it's in landfill somewhere, so it, it no longer exists. The shot that's coming up, it just gives me the shivers every time I see it. It is just, it is just it's not just about catching the fish, it's getting the moment on camera as well. And this is a classic example of what happens when you get that right. Wait, 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 wait. Now, now, now. That is a serious sized grunge. That is a man sized animal. That is as big as a person. It's bigger than a lot of people around here. Up to this point, um, nobody had really seen much in the way of freshwater fish on TV. And uh, one reason for that is a, a lot of freshwater fish, they live in conditions like that, very poor visibility. Even the best cameraman in the world, you drop them in, they're just not going to be able to film anything. And the other thing is, a lot of freshwater fish are, are not particularly pretty. Um, if nobody can see you, what's the point of being good looking? People are more familiar with seeing all those beautiful fish swimming around on coral reefs and stuff like that. Something like this is pretty hideous, but you reach a point where something is so hideous that it actually becomes interesting, uh, fascinating even. And, and I think you know, when people saw this, they were just blown away by its appearance, its size. And like I say, this, getting this fish out of the water to have a look at it, this fish led to everything that, that came afterwards. That is a big fish. They do exist, the grunge do exist. Six foot of muscle behind that mouth, and those teeth are just like shark teeth. Very unusual for a catfish. Most catfish don't have teeth, really, to speak of. They have sort of sandpapery pads, so those, those sharp um, teeth, which would be very good for, for, for gripping, uh, very unusual for catfish. Okay, uh, is it off the ground? No, yes. Okay, 166. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.